Alright, so we've looked at the waveform um, capability of this device. Um, the next button down is parameters. If I just pick uh, sine wave, which is what I've got set up right now, you've got your frequency, amplitude, offset, and phase. So by default, you when you press waveform, you get the um, different waveforms that you can select, which we've already gone through. If I push the next button, what it's doing is it's jumping me to the parameters for the same waveform. So what you can do here is now you've got the four options, the frequency, amplitude, offset, and phase. Now, I'm not going to go through the functionality of all of those again because I just did uh, as we were going through waveforms because when you select a waveform, it is automatically going to the parameters. So um, if you start pressing other buttons, like I just pressed uh, button one, button two, um, it's obviously changing the, the available menu options on the bottom here to deal with the output of the uh, waveform generator. So pushing the parameters button allows you to get directly back to the parameter settings so that you can tweak. So if I had this turned on right now and was outputting a signal, um, I can actually just press one button and then start adjusting the frequency of the output, which is kind of cool. Uh, makes it a lot easier when you want to just play around with the uh, settings to adjust your test scenario. So let's just go to the next button, the units. So yeah, as I suspected, you have the ability on frequency to go between a frequency or a period. So if you look at um, what we have set right now, which was 100 hertz, by pressing it to go period, it says that I've got 10 milliseconds, uh, which obviously makes sense because 100 hertz is 10 milliseconds from a period perspective. So either depending on what you're used to using or depending on your test scenarios, you can just switch it easily to either one of those. Um, amplitude offset is the next button, so if I just press that, um, it's just flipped to a high-low um, so the high level, it's uh, on a peak to peak, it was set to 100 millivolts peak to peak. But if you think about that, that is actually with the zero offset, it is um, 50 above and 50 below. So pressing the high low button um, allows you to, um, looking at this, set the high value separately to the low. So if you wanted to, um, instead of trying to figure out, okay, I've got uh, 66 millivolts peak to peak, and I want 30% of that above, uh, or sorry, and you want it to say just 40 millivolts above. You don't have to do the math. You can just flip to high low and actually just set how much above and how much below without having to work out the uh, peak to peak or anything like that. Um, okay, let's just go back to amplitude offset. So amplitude peak. To, so yeah, okay. When you got high low, um, one of the the third menu button is disappearing here. So when you've got amplitude offset. Uh, you've got the option of amplitude VPP, so that's peak to peak. I've just pressed this, you can, so you can say amplitude peak to peak, um, amplitude volts RMS. So you can see that um, when I pick, pick to peak to peak, that's 100 millivolts peak to peak. If I pick RMS, it's changing itself automatically to 35.36 uh, millivolts, which if you know uh, the difference between RMS and peak to peak is 0.707, and if you look at that, uh, 35.36 is um, 0.707 of the 1 volt peak to peak because that's plus 500 minus 500 okay so next one is in dbm so again with 100 millivolts peak to peak that at, into a 50 ohm load uh, that works out to be minus 16.02 dbm so if you're doing uh, work on sound or antenna um, driving and things like that where you actually want to be working in DBMs versus uh, absolute volts and things then you know th this is the setting that you would be using. Uh, can go back to peak to peak okay phase um, which is where you can offset one channel from another uh, you can use degrees which is the default you can switch to radians um, or you can switch to seconds so depending on what you're trying to do and what you're used to using uh, very handy to get into your favorite um, unit of measure. So sweep um, is start and stop um, and center span. So if you're using the sweep input um, it allows you to determine whether you're expanding from a, the center or whether you're sweeping from one end to another. Okay so again we'll, uh, we'll see how we go but we'll uh, uh, hook up something to drive that um, as we go through the reviews and see what we can do with it. Um, going back to parameters again. Sorry, we were on to units, so we've just done units. Let's go down to the next one, modulate. Um, so turn modulation on and off, whether it's so it's pretty straightforward. 
Um, they're showing you a sample here, so there's your, uh, if I just turn it back off, there's your sine wave. Um, it's currently default set to AM. Um, the depth of modulation, whereas the depth is 100%, there's default, and it's um, the frequency of modulation is set to 100 hertz, uh, which happens to be the same as we have as the input signal. Uh, modulation is a sine wave, so looking at that, we can actually change our amplitude modulation to a square wave, a triangle wave, an up ramp, or a down ramp. Uh, we can use noise to modulate all the pseudo random. Uh, bit simulator or the uh, or an arbitrary waveform. So basically anything that this can generate as a normal signal, it looks like you can also use to generate um, a rand uh, the amplitude modulation of a base signal. So if we just uh, that's the where is it? Hold on, sorry, sine wave. Uh, if I turn the modulation on with a sine wave, you can see here that it's uh, basically because it's the same signal, it's really so look, what have we got? 100.000 hertz, and the amplitude frequency is 100 hertz as well. Let's just reduce that to 50 hertz um, modulation. So there you go. That's a little better now. Um, let's go back to where we were before. AM depth. Um, yeah. Type amplitude. So different modulation things that we can do. You can select frequency. So there's the, uh, I'm just leaving the display up now so you can see the effect on the screen. Uh, frequency deviation. Um, sorry, back to frequency. Now um, phase modulation. So you can see here now the input signal is actually shifting the phase, which is quite interesting. Um, type uh, frequency shift key. So it's a little harder to see what the effect is on, on this particular one, but um, let's just go back and we'll just go along VPSK. Um, interesting, I'm going to have to look up what that one actually is. Um, sum, so it's adding amplitude modulation frequency. If I just take that down to 10 hertz, so let's get you a more classic shape here. Um, the shape, as you can see, it's a square wave, uh, shape triangle wave. So that's just changing how we modulate that signal. Let's go back to sine wave, uh, go more here. Um, channel one phase modulation, internal alt source, here we go. So you can use an internal source, which is what we're doing right now, and you can pick an external source, which will have to play with later because we have that on the back panel. I don't have anything hooked up to it yet. Um, and if I go back to source, we can pick channel 2 as a modulation source as well. And we'll look at that as we go through. So we've been looking at internal generators to uh, vary the signal. You can also, anything you can create on channel 2, you can use to actually modulate channel 1, which is pretty good. Okay, now we're going to look at the sweep um, functionality which is um, down here and as you can see that's without any modulation or sweeping or anything like that so when we turn sweep on um, right now it's doing a frequency sweep with the uh, sweep signal so it's linear and as you can see here it's not very clear if I zoom in there you'll be able to maybe see that better um, you can see the sweep input the sweep signal is not from external it's from internal it's just linearly ramping up here at the moment so we just go back wide all right so you've got type linear uh, logarithmic which is um, everybody knows what log hopefully and list so to on type list so what else have you got that's basically it so linear logarithmic and list We'll look at the list options a little bit later. View list. So we have a list of different things here. Yeah, it looks like we can actually put in a number of different um, signals, either frequency or um, yeah. So let's so look one, two, three. Select row. Um, Select row, how do you select? 
oh, there you go. Yeah, this doesn't seem to be very consistent in how the menus work. So select row, we can actually select which one we're doing, um, add a frequency. Okay, so just added an extra row to this. If I do it again, uh, I can notice the waveform in the background is changing. So if I up this one, uh, um, uh, okay, done, done, done. Let's, uh, go back to type list. So view the list. I think you can. Well, no, list. Yes, we got that view list. Can we add frequency, delete frequency, reorder list? Oh, frequency. There we go. So we can edit the frequency that this particular item is modulating um, the signal on view list. Um, select row. So that was 100, 550, so let's just see, we maybe do that one. Um, change its frequency, so there we go. And we'll say done to that, so we'll view the list again. Uh, select the very bottom one, uh, frequency. So I've never done this before, so you can see that it actually is fairly intuitive to be able to do this, if you notice, here on the display it's actually increasing the frequency of that part of my um, list so let's just say done so you can see here of now actually this sweep is going through different settings um, and uh, save list uh, okay so it's allowing me to save that onto internal memory so we'll say yes um, so I'm not 100% sure what that output is currently going to be looking at. But uh, so list length is five frequencies. We've got that. So let's just turn the sweep on. Um, what I'll do actually, I don't know what that one's doing quite off the bat because that screen there is not showing me. So I will just zoom out and hook up a um, my oscilloscope to this and see what that is actually outputting. So the output is currently not turned on. And hook this up to the oscilloscope. Bring that back up. Uh, channel 1 on. Let's just increase the amplitude. Um, parameters, okay, amplitude, all right, let me do this, okay, there we go, five, uh, so one volt peak to peak, uh, that should be good enough, let's go back to the sweep menu, let's, uh, I have this running really, really slowly, let's get rid of channel two, So look on the oscilloscope here you can see it actually um, I've got the frequency fairly slow so it's not really showing up too much as far as what this is doing I've just slowed down the oscilloscope a little bit so you can see it's actually stepping through that list of uh, sweep values to quite dynamically and dramatically change the frequency that's being detected um, or being driven out of the waveform generator which is uh, Pretty cool. So I'd imagine that if you were doing, say, testing some tones uh, to an amplifier, for example, you could set up a, a set of um, frequencies to output based on uh, step rate and things like that, and uh, just have it slowly work its way through those and uh, allow you to test on an oscilloscope or something the output of a um, an amplifier or any other processing logic that you may have. So that looks pretty good. Anyway, let's just go back to this. I'm going to leave these both in view for the moment. Um, it's as wide as I can get right now. So I'll leave the scope in view there. Let me just turn sweep off. So we'll go back to there. I'm going to adjust the 
frequency so I'm just pressing parameters and I'm going to get it up to a faster frequency just so that um, let's just go one megahertz and crank this up there we go All right, so we're running at one megahertz, uh, 500 nanoseconds of division. Um, so my oscilloscope actually confirms that this thing is outputting 999.9. Move that a bit so I can see it. 94 kilohertz, which is um, pretty accurate. I actually don't have a um, frequency counter, so I'm not able to test this very, very um, for accuracy. But you know, based on the the who the manufacturer is being Agilent and the um, level that this device is pitched at, I have no doubts that it is going to be very very accurate. We'll look at the specifications for it, and when we go into more of a detailed um, like look at the internals and have a look at the um, limits of its capabilities later on. So let's just um, play with some of these settings so that you can actually see. Uh, the result. So we were saying before waveform. So we're just going to go through square wave, um, oops, waveform, ramp, um, pulse. So that I think I left it very very narrow right now. So let's just go down to where is it pulse width and see if we can easily crank this up. So yep, there we go. That's actually quite easy to um, configure where we at. Uh, so running it. 800 kilohertz at the moment was the frequency I had set so it was actually quite interesting that that changed um, so 500 nanoseconds at 800 kilohertz that's not quite 50 percent of course um, if I change uh, frequency to one nope sorry wrong thing parameter cancel uh, pro, there we go, parameters, frequency, 1 megahertz, there you go, so 1 megahertz of course is um, is 1 microsecond, so of course 50% duty cycle would be 500 nanoseconds. Um, so while we're here, let's just have a quick look at what we can do with the leading and trailing edges of this. Right now I've left them at their maximum um, speed, which is the 2.9 nanoseconds. Now my scope is only 100 megahertz and is not terribly expensive so I won't be able to accurately measure that because 2.9 nanoseconds is uh, beyond the upper bandwidth limits of my scope so uh, but anyway we can actually see the effect of this if I just um, and just try this in a different way so one let's just change it to a microsecond there we go um, it's limited it to 792 micro nanoseconds because of course the frequency we're running at but now at least I can um, play with that so let's just crank it down so 692 let's just say get it to nice even digits 700 nanoseconds so um, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 we basically back down to 100 nanoseconds there if I do the trailing edge to uh, the same thing 100 um, nanoseconds All right. so now we've got the trailing edge so if I change that to uh, 300 nanoseconds change the leading edge to uh, 300 nanoseconds you can see we're now starting to move towards a triangle wave so we're taking those slopes down which is pretty handy uh, again for um, being able to have very very good control of what kind of signal you're using uh, if I go to, no, sorry, where was I, pulse width, no, edge timers, both, which is one of the ones we looked at. Now I've only got one adjustment here, um, so if I go back to um, the maximum, so now I can actually control them both together. So that pulse width is being limited to 300 nanoseconds because of the frequency, but if I change the frequency down to, uh, let's just say 10 kilohertz, uh, this is actually very very easy to drive without having to do too much math figuring you know, or uh, reading of manuals or anything because I haven't done that yet so I'm actually quite impressed on how easy this is to uh, work through so okay so now we're running at 10 kilohertz so if I just go, now go back to the um, pulse width we're going to widen that up to uh, five, 5 microseconds yeah 
let's adjust the scope here. Okay, let's get that in the middle. So now we've got a much wider range that we can do with the edge timer. So I've still got it set to both, that just saves me. So now I'm cranking this up. I've set a 1.2 microsecond, uh, 2 microsecond rise time and fall time on a 10 kilohertz signal. So you can see there we're getting actually quite good control of this waveform. So that's excellent. Let's just go back, say done. Let's pick. Uh, let's go back, pick a different waveform, see what we can do here. Um, pulse. So pulse. Of course, it's uh, what's this doing to me here? Um, I'll reduce my pulse width. Um, edge times. Let's just bring these right down again. Um, one. Okay, so just set these to the maximum timing. So. Um, yeah, it looks like on the screen here I've got a 10 kilohertz signal, I've got a 1 microsecond pulse and uh, rise and fall times are 2.9 nanoseconds which is as fast as this will go. Uh, if you look on the oscilloscope now you can see that's uh, showing me the pulse there if I just reduce the time base. Um, it's basically 1, 2, 3, 4 divisions at 25 microseconds so 100 microseconds interval which obviously that's you know 10 kilohertz. Um, so we're just going to crank this back out again, look at the pulse. So we can see here that um, we're now easily able to control the width of this pulse. Um, okay, so that's square waves. So let's go back to um, arbitrary. So let's have a look at some of these arbitrary waveforms. Um, select arb, select, and we'll go to uh, built in uh, cardiac so select let's just what is this set to for okay so it's defaulted to a 69.49 millivolt signal so I'm just going to crank up my oscilloscope to 200 millivolts um, trying, I've using this with a 50 ohm output, so I have a 50 ohm terminator on the end of the oscilloscope here. Uh, let me just change my acquire settings so I can get a cleaner signal. Uh, turn the menu off. Adjust my triggering. I don't have the trigger in the range. There we go. And there you go. You've got your cardiac pulse. So you can see on the right hand side here what we're outputting and you can see on the oscilloscope that we're sending out a very nice um, cardiac pulse at about 89, uh, 88 hertz. So if that was your heartbeat, you're uh, doing <laughs> a very fast heart rate. <laughs> so uh, that would not be too healthy if it was real. But based on this, you can change the, where is it, um, sample rate. So uh, parameters, sample rate, Let's see if we can slow this down. So, obviously, as an actual heart rate, it would be. So, I'm slowly cranking down the heart rate here. Now it's down to less than 10 hertz. Um, so, I'm doing uh, two. This has 450 samples in the waveform, and I'm sampling at 2,000 samples per second. So that's, I think that's the slowest. No, oh, I can go down even slower. There we go. That's what you might see on the movies when they're monitoring the uh, patient. So I've slowed that right down. So you can see that even though the waveform that's in the generator only has 450 samples, um, that doesn't mean it's limited in its frequency. Um, or its amplitude or anything else. You can actually adjust these quite easily. Now right now this is running with a zero offset, but let me just try um, tweaking that. Uh, I've just gone down there, so you can see if you watch the oscilloscope, um, I'm just dropping this down. You can see on the oscilloscope now it's dropped quite way down. Um, we've taken the offset to minus 30 millivolts, which is just under half. Let me go to 34. So that's about half. So now the top of this waveform should be hitting the center of the scope, which it is. If I go the other direction back to zero and take it down to about 
20 millivolts negative. So that completes the uh, tour of the front, front panel of the Agilent 33622A waveform generator and as you can see I have not yet read the manual in any way and uh, almost everything I've come across um, has taken very very little think time to figure out how to use it, how to change the settings, uh, units, the sweep burst, uh, etc. It's all been very very intuitive uh, to use which is very very pleasing. Uh, I think anybody that has a rudimentary knowledge of um, just even the signals that they want to inject where in the past they may have used um, an, an, you know, an analog oscillator or um, you know, some logic oscillators to generate square waves or pulses and things um, knowing what you want to do and being able to simply look at the screen and press buttons and, and use what is obviously very very intuitive controls makes for an excellent experience of this device. I'm very impressed um, and this basically concludes the first overview. So what's my feelings? Um, well, I haven't had to use the manual yet, so um, as far as doing the guy thing where um, I don't you know, want to read the manual, I just want to get in there and use this thing, anybody that would buy one should be able to just pick this thing up and use it right away with very, very little effort. So the next thing I'm going to dive into, which is not part of this video, but it will be in the same review, is actually generating some um, waveforms um, of my own design, or at least not ones that are built into the um, generator, and uh, seeing how easy it is to get them on and get them to show up on my oscilloscope. So let's see how we go. Anyway, this ends the uh, overview.